Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everybody, uh, wherever you are. Thank you very much for joining us. We know that you are in very different uh, regions of the world, uh, different languages, because today we speak English, French, Portuguese. Uh, so thank you, thank you very much again uh, for many of you being uh, regulars to our sessions, to PAFO, the Pan-African Farmers uh, Organization uh, uh, in Africa, and COLID, uh, the institution I work uh, for, um, uh, a series of sessions today, number 15, uh, linking actually uh, smallholder farmers, SMEs, MSMEs, SMEs, and the private sector uh, in support of uh, sustainable food systems and the agri-food sector. Uh, today we have a very, very interesting topic, um, uh, which is technological innovations in the agri-food sector, and each time, as usual, putting the spot and the focus on entrepreneurs, what are the adoptions by SMEs and entrepreneurs in Africa, and always local entrepreneurs, men and women. It happened today, actually, that the two women uh, that were in the program uh, couldn't make it, um, but we will have more of those in, in this topic. So before uh, giving a frame, we have uh, uh, in different uh, sessions uh, talked already about parts of the technological innovations, be on the food processing, uh, be on techniques uh, of, uh, of uh, drying uh, uh, um, agri-food uh, agri products, uh, be on logistics and solar and, and so on. But today uh, in the program, we will speak a bit more of some of the, uh, of the existing technology, especially uh, on, the, on the digital part, not only but with a focus on that one and different models within, within, uh, within this. But we will get back to it. I think uh, that Baba Femi and Jeremy are a better place to, uh, uh, to, uh, to give us uh, some introductory and setting the scene remarks. Um, first, I give the floor to um, uh, Baba Femi Oyewole, uh, who is the CEO of the Pan-African Farmers uh, Organization. You know him very well already. Uh, he's a regular, he's a co-organizer of this series. We appreciate very much the partnership with PAFO uh, and its members. And we are very pleased to have Eastern African Farmers Federation Executive uh, uh, Secretary today with us as well, uh, presenting in, in uh, a bit later. And uh, Baba Femi has a long experience, of course, of of uh, public, private, but also non-governmental uh, sectors. He, you might have known him in his uh, previous work as a CEO of the African Agribusiness Alliance, as the CEO of the African Cashew Alliance, and the former executive director and CEO of the African Energy Investment Corporation, among other things. So without major delay, thank you very much, uh, Baba Femi, for joining us. And uh, please, uh, you have the floor for some introductory remarks. Baba Femi, if you can hear us, I know that uh, he's uh, traveling. He was with us a few minutes ago. Um, so while Le Mohamed checks, if he has, a, if he has lost a, his a connection, if not, I will go to uh, in, in between to Jeremy, if you don't mind, Jeremy. Jeremy Knops is the DG of COLID, uh, the organization I work for, an association, non for profit association of private sector operators, very active uh, in Africa, of course, and other regions in the world. Um, Jeremy has, of course, a long experience uh, on the agri food sector, uh, not only in Africa, but uh, Latin America and other parts of the world as well. Uh, very much uh, expertise on um, uh, matters related to uh, private standards, certification, of course, ACP um, uh, production and exports uh, with a focus on fruits and vegetables, but uh, other value chains as well. And uh, um, thank you very much, Jeremy, again, for being with us uh, today. And perhaps while we get uh, Baba Femi back, if you don't mind starting, thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Zelina. I just saw that uh, Baba Femi uh, has been able to, to rejoin us. So uh, thank you uh, also, Baba Femi, for, for being uh, with us and, th and thank you uh, to, to all of you, uh, participants and, and, and panelists uh, uh, for being with us uh, today and for having been with us uh, during uh, during all the past uh, uh, sessions that we've been uh, organizing so far in, in collaboration with uh, uh, with PATFOR. Um, a welcome, a warm welcome. Um, today's session is, is exciting um, and I won't be extremely long uh, 
um, in, 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 in introducing it. Um, but I'd just like to, to, to remind that ourselves as, a, as an organization, as a private sector uh, association, not for profit, uh, what one of our um, common threads throughout all, all our work which again is, is geared towards achieving SDGs and, and, and making sure that the agri-food sector is in, a, is in a better position to contribute to achieving uh, uh, SDGs, uh, is to work on, on, on the human capital. Uh, it's to work on skills, competencies, uh, in, 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 and information. Of course, so when it comes to uh, new technologies and including, of course, uh, uh, smart agri-tech and what's happening in, in, in the digital space, um, we we see ourselves as 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 having three three functions three functions that we're able to uh, to implement thanks to the support of of our donors of course uh, through programs such as the Fit for Market Plus uh, uh, program which is funded by the EU and and the CPS. So number one, it's trying to as much as possible um, providing a, a picture of what's there, what's out there, <laughs> which is already challenging uh, in itself. So it's monitoring, identifying, understanding, in some cases even piloting, um, and not always necessarily um, the most innovative, uh, or the, 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 the newest or the most recent uh, technologies that have appeared, but to also understand them and how they can be used in, in different contexts. Because um, we firmly believe uh, in the importance, of course, of, of, of pursuing uh, all activities related to, to research. Uh, but we also realize that these are cycles that uh, can often take uh, uh, quite a while. And that in, in, in light of today's uh, challenges, we also need to, to pay uh, a close attention to already all the uh, uh, new technologies, uh, innovations which are, which are out there, but which are not already always available uh, everywhere or, or which are not always suited uh, in the different contexts. So first of all, it's the, this monitoring. Then number two, of course, is uh, to the best of our ability, uh, try to create the conditions to be able to link uh, some very concrete needs being expressed by MSMEs, uh, cooperatives, farmers, uh, and with, with some of these uh, solutions. And, and that uh, usually, and this is an increasing uh, part, part of our work because we realize it, it, it is a, a kind of a continuous remaining challenge uh, linking this, of course, to the access to finance uh, topic, because it's, of course, usually uh, through investments that are being made uh, by uh, individual operators that uh, um, the acquisition of some of these technologies can uh, can take place. And, and and number three, of course, it, it's it's working on on the skills um, that are 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 needed, the competencies uh, through uh, over capacity building, training, technical assistance uh, to make sure that it's used to to the full uh, full potential. In a nutshell, from, from from my experience, of course, we uh, we we we've uh, we we have a couple of key learnings, huh? and, and some of the uh, technologies that either we we've been in touch with uh, directly or indirectly, of course, through through all the uh, partners we we work with in different countries. Um, notion of keep keeping it extremely simple for for the end user. That is something that that we've noticed uh, has been one of a, a key success factor in the uptake. Of, of some of the some of the uh, technologies, it's it's really having a vision from the start of fully integrating this into uh, into the business model, uh, into the farm model, um, and and linking it, of course, in a, in a holistic analysis today on on the environmental, economic, social side of how this can uh, uh, can increase the overall uh, sustainability performance of a, of of an entity. Uh, it's it's to make sure that it's it's localized, contextualized, um, and that. The bridges then are being built uh, between solutions that are being adopted or, or launched in, in 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 a country, and that these can be then replicated or reused uh, in 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 different countries uh, with uh, minor or, or or more substantial uh, adaptations. Um, and and in that spirit, of course, uh, this notion of of creating synergies, partnerships are are crucial. Uh, as for uh, usually all the topics uh, that have been addressed so far. Uh, within the context of these Papua co-leader uh, uh, series, so I'll I'll leave it uh, uh, on on this note, uh, and I'll thank again, of course, all all participants for, for being here. Please uh, participate in the chat. Questions, uh, uh, Papua team, co-lead team, uh, we, we're there 
to uh, to accompany you through uh, uh, all the support that also we have been mobilizing and that we're receiving uh, from uh, from our financial partners. Thank you very much, uh, Isolina. Uh, back to you. And again, welcome. And I wish you a, a fulfilling and an and interesting session. Thank you very much, Jeremy. And thank you very much, in addition, of course, to uh, Axel and Alison and to the colleagues who are online, Edouard, Victor, uh, and others who have supported this session as well. Uh, uh, Baba Femi, I introduce you. If you are ready, um, I think you lost the connection a few minutes. Thank you again for being us, being with us today, because I know that is it's not easy. Can you hear us, Baba Femi? Yes, thank you very oh, much. I well, mean, we can I was, see that for I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised. I've been, I've, I've connected uh, thirty minutes before the time. I was. I say so, that. I said it. You yes. were with us. Yeah, it was. It was a really embarrassing situation. Uh, uh, well, I think I, I can still welcome everybody to this fifteenth uh, edition of the uh, uh, program, uh, and. I uh, want to really appreciate uh, all of you that have been supporting this, uh, uh, this initiative uh, and the technical team that are behind the production of this, uh, of this program. Uh, we know that uh, uh, technological innovations is very crucial. Uh, and uh, it, it, it is it's very important for agri food SMEs today, and um, we need to really uh, explore the the the, uh, the the opportunities that it presents to the SMEs and the uh, agri entrepreneur agri food entrepreneurs. And uh, one thing we need to understand is that as these uh, technologies are emerging, there are also challenges that comes with it for uh, these. Uh, entrepreneurs and SMEs to adopt them. And that is what we want to really uh, talk about in this uh, edition of the uh, of the uh, innovation session. And what we need to understand is uh, the key, key uh, questions. What are the innovations that these SMEs and entrepreneurs uh, develop to uh, and adopt, which uh, contribute to their uh, to the value addition and development of uh, value chains, and what kind of uh, investment is needed to assist SMEs and the uh, entrepreneurs to develop and adopt technological innovations. We uh, we know that one of the challenges of uh, adoption of uh, technological innovations is the initial cost of investment, which is often beyond the reach of these uh, SMEs and uh, entrepreneurs. So we are going to together look at how uh, we can uh, uh, come around that and uh, identify the investment that is needed. And uh, finally, what are the uh, what policy support and incentives should be uh, provided to SMEs and entrepreneurs to build their capacity to adopt technological in innovations? Uh, so these are the uh, issues that we are going to discuss in this uh, session. And finally, who, in pursuit of his uh, uh, strategic pillar of farming as a business, uh, powerful, we continue to collaborate and partner with uh, uh, institutions like uh, Colleague to uh, support African uh, SMEs and entrepreneurs to adopt and develop and de deploy uh, modern technological in in innovation that will boost their productivity, profitability, and sustainability. So I have therefore, call on all participants to feel free to contribute uh, to the discussions and ask questions so that we can uh, come up with workable prescriptions and policy recommendations that will assist the agri-food SMEs uh, and entrepreneurs to better take advantage of technological innovations and effectively manage the challenges for better outcomes. I wish you a very fruitful and successful deliberation. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Baba Femi, and thank you again for the great partnership uh, we have. And thank you for remaining, indeed, that opportunities are there, and we will see from local, small uh, scale, medium scale entrepreneurs, uh, but also challenges, and in particular, even more for small holders, obviously, uh, initial investment, technological skills, access to uh, infrastructure, maintenance, and so on. So we will, I'm sure that uh, the speakers we have this morning will remind us about that. So we will have uh, three um, uh, speakers uh, to start with, uh, entrepreneurs, and then we will have still entrepreneurs, but also um, uh, leaders of organizations that support uh, uh, entrepreneurs or research or the ecosystem. Uh, and then we will have uh, the question and answer service. As, uh, uh, as always, I encourage you to put uh, long um, before we arrive to that stage, the questions or comments or contributions you have uh, for uh, the panelists. And um, for the interpretation, as you know, it's uh, at the end of your screen, uh, you have a little globe and you have to choose uh, English, French or Portuguese. It's working well. So normally, please double check because I see a few uh, comments there. Um, unfortunately, Paul, Paul Matovu, uh, founder and CEO of the Vertical uh, and Micro Gardening in Uganda, uh, couldn't join today he had a, a, a big personal problem this morning so we wish him really uh, very very well and we will uh, get him in a, in a coming session so without major delay uh, we go to Cameroun donc Pyrrhus Pyrrhus Kudju um, qui est le fondateur et le directeur Pyrrhus Kudju is the founder and CEO of uh, ProMagric. He's uh, an agripreneur, a specialist of artificial intelligence, full stack developer, promoter of uh, ProMagric and Clinic Agro. So ProMagric means a promotion of uh, Cameroon agriculture. It is a virtual platform bringing together professionals, namely farmers, selling their agricultural produce and buyers. And then Cleaning Agro is a startup that develops technological solutions for agro-pastoral activities, so agriculture, farming, uh, livestock uh, breeding, and to optimize farm from, um, profitability, increase productivity and food quality and better manage resources. Like it was said before in the introduction, we're all working towards improving uh, the quality of our resources. Pyrus has won several awards in France, Africa, but also in France. He is uh, devoted to um, helping uh, small producers. Uh, Pyrus, are you present? Yes, hello. Hello, Isolina. If he, we could ask um, Mohamed to share a brief video which will run with subtitles in English, by the way. Thank you for sharing the sound also. You can see the translation into English. You need uh, to click on uh, the three dotted line, the three dots that are at the bottom of your screen. On the Zoom bar at the bottom of your screen, there are three little dots. That's to get the original sound in French. Yes, that is the sound of the video.
So, Pyrus, if you want, you can now start your presentation. Thank you very much. I am absolutely delighted to be part of this section organized uh, jointly by PAFO and co-lead. I'm uh, the uh, promoter of Clinic Agro, which is based in uh, Cameroon. It's a startup uh, based on uh, serving agro-pastoral activities to um, improve uh, profitability of companies and uh, increase productivity and food quality. I'm delighted that uh, Francophone uh, Africa is present. You know, uh, the small grower today does not have the means to have a reliable, efficient uh, connections. So it's very difficult for him uh, to plan his um, agricultural tasks so without data, without having access to data, it's harder to plan production for a grower. So this is the reason why we have decided to target uh, more than 20 million micro uh, farmers in French-speaking Africa. We have uh, three solutions. The first is a sensor which is connected to the soil and it will enable the grower, the farmer, in less than 30 seconds to um, analyze the soil. The second solution is a big data solution, actually. It's a platform that will enable the grower to plan uh, remotely. And the third solution is uh, to be able to assess and rate the agricultural pro pro projects. So, as I was indicating, the first tool is a sensor that will analyze the soil. There are a number of um, parameters that will take into account salinity, uh, so, so salt content, temperature, humidity, uh, and so on. Let's move on. The second solution will enable us to plan better, uh, for instance, fertilization. Uh, he will have access to weather forecasts in agriculture, to know how much fertilizer, what is the dosage of fertilizer to be used. And this is extremely important. You have no sensors here. So, for the small uh, growers who do not have enough financial resources, they have the possibility of using this um, reliable data to make a um, uh, forecast. Then you have the third uh, tool, which is called Eva Agri. Uh, here we have a technical score to see whether the uh, farmer has technical uh, skills, whether he has financial skills, whether he's able to sell his uh, produce, um, whether he can market the products, and so on and so forth. And of course, make sure that um, social and, and environmental conditions are being met. So that will enable to get a score a rating, if you want, which can be improved as time goes on with experience. As I was saying, we need um, financing 150k euros. So we are growing, so we need funds to be able to continue to grow on the targeted market. This is our roadmap. We have already more than 1,000, between 1,000 and 2,000 farmers who've uh, been uh, working with us. We want to have an impact on more than 2 million farmers in less than three months. So this is our team. 
in order to be able to achieve such solutions, the four of us have been working hard around the clock, practically. Myself, then you have uh, Eric Guagna, who's um, a project leader, uh, Corentin, who's a, a marketing leader. And then we have uh, uh, agricultural engineers all around Africa who are helping us to uh, collect data uh, with the farmers. So thank you very much. What I can add here is that all of the uh, players on the value chain, so farmers, processors, distributors, play a crucial role in adopting these technologies, these innovations, such as uh, uh, precision uh, agriculture, robotization, and uh, this will help them reduce the cost and take advantage of uh, new possibilities. I'm available for questions and I'm delighted to be here today. Thank you very much, uh, Pyrus. So during the question and answer session, uh, we will come back to what you said. We encourage you to uh, put these questions in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to give the Natu floor Kunda to Abraham. Is the founder Abraham. and managing director of Interconnect Point. Uh, in Uganda, um, actually the technology also startup, um, which is not only based in, in uh, Uganda, but also Rwanda now, if I understand right. They offer uh, an industrial internet of things solution that improves the quality control and revenue in the agriculture tea value chain. And this is done, he will tell us more, by applying an e nose and analytics engine to supplement and deter determine optimum levels of uh, tea processing stages. So the company offers um, IoT infrastructure planning and management, design and maintenance of low power wide area networks, mobile satellite systems, and delivering data analytics as a service. Uh, Abraham, you have a, a background in telecommunications, mobile money, and systems administration. So if you could share with us um, the, um, uh, the business model of uh, Interconnect Point from Uganda. Thank you very much, Abraham. Thank you, Isolina. I don't know whether the IT team is able to share my screen. Thank you, yes. So I'll present to you about our solution at Interconnect Point, uh, where I, I lead as a co-founder and uh, a managing director currently. Uh, we're a team of three, and uh, we've been together uh, for some time doing this work uh, based on uh, uh, a, a research background from our university and uh, advancing it as a, a spin-off uh, into industry. We are addressing a market industry of uh, uh, over 10 million uh, tea farmers on the continent, majorly in, within East Africa. We are targeting uh, over 300 tea factories in Africa. We are looking at uh, a $12 billion market in Africa and the 1.5 million metric tons per annum, and uh, a compound annual growth rate of 12% uh, forecasting to 2028. The key problem we are addressing uh, is related to what the tea industry has been facing for more than 50 years, uh, where uh, I will give an example. Uh, if uh, a tea uh, factory, for instance, out of the 300 plus within the East African market has produced a kilogram of tea. Uh, they normally trade in the Mombasa auction at maybe $5 per kilo. But the challenge is the inconsistency and the fluctuations and then the revenue uncertainty that comes with that. Today, this week, you could produce at $5 per kilo, but the other week, you could produce at uh, maybe $3 per kilo or slightly above uh, the average. Uh, so what we are trying to target is how can we leverage technology uh, to stabilize the quality, uh, reduce the price fluctuations, and then hence uh, uh, revenue stability for both the factories and the 
small holder farmers who are over 10 million in East Africa. Uh, the why is during manufacturing uh, of the tea after it has been collected from the farms, we have variable tea master scales where a next part will decide where a process is supposed to stop or begin. Then we have thumb, rows of thumb, uh, labor, and uh, basic hand tools that are applied in the manufacturing process. And then we had a gap in data analytics to track what is happening at uh, different stages of production. And then uh, limited ability to produce consistent quality that I've already talked about. And then uh, the different and variable consumer preferences. Uh, globally, uh, uh, for instance, when you're in the UK, you would prefer to target maybe uh, a specific product from a certain factory in the region based on maybe the ability to have data about uh, uh, maybe food security uh, 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 pointers. If you know, you can trace back to where your tea has been grown, you can know how it has been produced, and you know it is consistently following a certain uh, practice, then it gives you some bit of confidence. So the solution really looks at deploying uh, proprietary sensors uh, where we have uh, gone ahead to uh, work with different partners all over the world and different laboratories and uh, maker spaces to come up with a combined sensor chamber where we track the specific gases during the production, uh, where which are emitted, for instance, through oxidation or which is fermentation of the tea as you make the end product and targeting uh, gases like carbon dioxide, tracking uh, oxygen, humidity, temperature, hydrogen, and others. So we combine this in our proprietary uh, sensor approach, and then uh, we deploy at different stages of the production. And then uh, through that, we go over a cloud platform uh, over Amazon Web Services and uh, Google Cloud, and then uh, we can push data to our machine learning platform. And then we're able to visualize uh, to in the interested parties within the factory to monitor their process in real time, and uh, also to uh, give access to data to different factories which are possibly poor performing so that they can benchmark from different factories that have been uh, performing uh, to the global standard. And uh, we also have interested customers who are interested uh, customers that we tend to also uh, fully uh, focus on, who are interested in uh, getting this data and analyzing it and making sure that they can produce, they can resell and sell uh, based on uh, 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 quality uh, data uh, from the product they are putting out in the market. Um, so consistent quality can improve tea factory revenue by up to 50% uh, uh, with the potential to add an additional 1.5 billion in revenue from tea uh, within the East African region. And uh, we think we have a role to play in that direction. So business model um, and uh, the future uh, or on our end is that we offer this to tea factories similar to a sensors and analytics as a service uh, where we uh, a tea factory pays for installs at the outsets or their factories, as well as ongoing analytics so that they can find what they are doing. And then uh, pricing is designed so that the factory has a return on investment uh, in the sense that uh, they should be able to reap up to 10 uh, times the value of the investment. And that uh, we've been improving that over time and we hope to achieve that uh, in, the, in the near future. So uh, the broader future has an area where we intend to improve factory design in Yes, in a sense of energy usage, how can we improve that energy usage? You know, most of the tea factories use wood, for instance, to do their boiler uh, systems uh, to dry the tea. And we think we should be able to uh, optimize the energy usage in terms of uh, wood, burning wood, and maybe saving trees uh, when it comes to the environment. And then uh, also reducing or um, optimizing electricity. We should uh, not over ferment, over heat, over dry, over wither. Or let's optimize primary product produce the tea so that we have some bit of energy to you know, to to save, and then now uh, we uh, follow on to expand and improve reliability in other dynamic agro industries such as coffee, cocoa, and so on with our technologies. Uh, I think um, I've given you a, a, a brief of uh, what we're doing at Internet Point. We've uh, currently uh, uh, piloted and uh, installed the number of uh, uh, POCs within Uganda and. Uh, Rwanda, and we think we should be able to be in the Kenyan market fully uh, in a few uh, months from now uh, to enhance what we're doing. Thank you very much for the opportunity of sharing with you, and I uh, hope uh, to be more interactive uh, going forward with the uh, uh, people that have attended uh, the webinar.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Abraham. And um, you will have uh, some uh, questions and for further thoughts uh, to share later uh, when we get to the uh, interaction with the audience. I see already uh, some questions uh, for Pyrrhus. Um, so the um, uh, next speaker uh, is uh, Ulrich. Alors, du Bénin. On va au Bénin cette fois-ci avec Ulrich Gido, uh, qui est le cofondateur. We are now moving to Benin. Uh, we have uh, Ulrich uh, uh, Gido, who is the co-founder and chairman of BioLife Tech in Benin. He's an agricultural engineer specializing in sustainable production systems and with a particular expertise in waste recovery. He is uh, particularly interested in uh, focusing on the value chain of products from perishable horticultural crops, particularly fruit and vegetables, from production to marketing, and he aims to promote healthier, environmental-friendly agriculture while reducing post-harvest losses. He's going to explain to us what companies uh, he has been uh, dealing with, um, notably uh, BioLife, which is specializing in uh, organic uh, inputs uh, to uh, uh, upgrade uh the uh waste we're really pleased to be working with them with uh Khalid and Amel who's also an organization of producers and I have two colleagues Edouard Lehmann and uh, Victor uh, uh, who are online and who can also take the floor after Ulrich so first of all Ulrich thank you very much for being here with us and thank you for sharing your presentation with us of this model thank you very much can you hear me correctly Absolutely, we hear you. Go ahead. Thank you very much. As you indicated, I'm uh, Ulrich Gido, and I'm here to speak about uh, BioLife Tech. Our um, idea is to improve agriculture in uh, in Africa uh, in uh, by developing. Uh, digital solutions, innovative solutions um, to meet all of the challenges uh, that growers are confronted with. So we also want to allow the growers to have access to agricultural uh, products. Uh, for this, we need to have precise agriculture, precision agriculture, and uh, we also need to have traceability so that we know how uh, the crops have been produced. This is important for accessing the market. So we want to know how they have improved their practice. And so this is why improving production practice is really enshrined in our approach. One of the solutions that we've developed over the last two years is this one. We've called it ePine A. Uh, this is a digital application which connects producers with buyers using a dynamic map. So we're talking about producers, merchants, exporters, uh, processors, and all of those who also uh, are related to this, you know, carriers, packaging units, and so on. So on the basis of the markers that you see on the map here, these markers show... Uh, a pineapple field in Benin. So in red, it shows that the uh, this is a recent production, less than 12 months. When the marker is in green, it means that the field has already received the uh, flower-inducing uh, uh, treatment or method and for pineapples. And so producers, all they need to do is use our technical data sheet, uh, which is at the bottom of the screen, 
And uh, on the basis of two or three uh, pieces of information, the algorithm is going to consider this and analyze the field. So we know what is the real time availability, the contact. We can also have uh, access to virtual stores where you can find um, derived products from ananas, from pineapple. And of course, you also have uh, information on the platform that has uh, indications regarding transport and logistics. So next to that, we also developed another solution, which we've called Cluster App, where uh, organizations such as Finacopa that have a structure and that uh, cannot use our uh, application because they have the producers, the, um, the processors, but they need to have a monitoring system such as this one. They might have a hundred fields, for instance. And so they need on this basis to delocalize the uh, production at times. So this app is going to help them with the agents that they have on ground. And they can know then exactly who is available, who has, say, the organic produce certification, who would be available. So this is a forecast tool, in other words, which can be extremely useful. Uh, our business model is this. For uh, the cluster app, it's a subscription system. So it's $10 a year for each producer. And uh, every time we need to create a data sheet, it's a cost of $5. And for the other, we also take a commission on each ton of pineapples which are sold. We take $8. We, I also told you about Marketplace, which is the for the derived product, organic produce, which are being bought on the virtual store. So depending on the quantities you're going, you pu you're going to purchase, we will take a commission that can vary from 5 to 10% per transaction. So we, when our action started, we met a number of challenges. We needed to raise awareness. Um, we needed to train people. We needed to collect information. We were present. In other words, it's not like we were just uh, hiding behind the digital platform. We were side by side with the producers. We helped them um, uh, register orders. And we have, since 2021 and uh, until now, we have more than 1,800 users, 1,200 producers, 250 food producers, uh, 35 carriers, 200 single users. So these are people who come uh, and see whether the produce is available. And of course, we have 70 uh, merchants. Uh, more than 700 transactions took place, more than 400 pineapple, fresh pineapple sales operations so that represented 550 tons and more than 150 uh, processing equipment and deliveries. I'll show you now a brief video to illustrate the process. So the problem is uh, access to the market. The sound is very low, so it's very difficult for interpreters to hear. But they are trying to illustrate 
uh, how to overcome problems. So production of pineapple is pretty difficult and this is why we developed the uh, platform. When you produce, what is discouraging is that after a few days, the pineapple becomes too mature and goes bad. So thanks to the application ePine A, I was able to sell my pineapples, says this lady. And uh, we were able to sell the pineapple kilo after kilo. And uh, I could see that I had an increase of orders. And I'm able to satisfy all my customers wherever there are. So thanks to the uh, application, we have a dynamic map which helps us make forecast. Ever since I've known of this application, I can't do without it. And we've used it systematically ever since. So you see, this was a brief video uh, to show you the results that we have already obtained. And by 2024, we expect to uh, cover 40% of our national market. In particular, we want to add new functions regarding traceability, but not only that, we ask people if we can see their crops, their fields. And so we're there to collect data and this is going to help the producer themselves. So by 2024 and 2025, we will extend to the neighboring countries, uh, Burkina Faso, um, the DRC and other countries. And we could also uh, consider applying this to other uh, production. By 2026, we can reach the European market or part of it. And if people are interested in those countries, maybe they can reach out and give us some help uh, so that we can achieve our goal uh, quickly. Um, you can see the team. It's a relatively young team. Thank you. Thank you, Ulrich, for this presentation. And thank you for the video. This was an extra. I hope the interpreters were able to translate. Otherwise, um, Axel will explain you that we have a blog and you'll find all the information there. But thank you already to all those who have uh, raised some questions to the members of our panel. So without further ado, we move forward with our product. With um, our so without major delay, Still with the business uh, development, uh, an enterprise development, but also from an organization that supports uh, smallholders and value chain actors, but uh, smallholders, members, member of um, uh, PAFO, um, the Eastern African Farmer uh, Federation. If you don't know them, please uh, visit them, visit their site uh, and, and contact them. Very, very interesting. I can say that because I, I know them for quite uh, a long time now. Uh, extremely efficient, uh, very supportive of small orders in all the uh, Eastern uh, African region. Uh, great results, uh, great leadership. And, uh, and really, that's what we want uh, to show uh, in those sessions, as Baba Femi told you at the beginning. So, Stefan Mushiri, thank you very much. I know how busy you are. You had many uh, uh, even invites for today. So, very, very uh, thank you very much for being with us. Executive Director of EIFF and also CEO of the e Granary is going to present today. Uh, his uh, background is horticulturist uh, from, uh, from Kenya, from the University uh, 
Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, um, but he's uh, the CEO of Eastern African Farmers, dedicated uh, most of his life uh, to this uh, big task to have them uh, really uh, integrated, included in uh, into the value chain at all levels, um, capturing as much as income and value as possible. Uh, so focusing on farmer entrepreneurship, uh, strengthening the role of farmers along the value chain, which is critical for all of us. Baba Femi was talking about, you know, not uh, being left aside, but being part of this movement. And he also uh, plays a, a central role on the, on the strategy, of course, um, uh, of the EIFF. Uh, he will present uh, to us today the eGranary, a mobile-based digital platform which is led by farmers and which links to the all relevant actors in the value chain. And for having seen that uh, at the beginning, I am uh, always impressed about how much and how far it has uh, uh, developed. And I haven't seen from my colleagues on the previous one, but please alert me if you want to uh, take the floor after to uh, bring some elements. Please, Steve, thank you very much uh, for thank being uh, with us, I believe from Kenya. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm from Kenya. Yes, thank you very much. And I have a very quick presentation. I won't put my video now, I'll put it later for the purposes of uh, connectivity. So I'll be presenting about the e-granary. Oops, oh, now it has stopped. <laughs> Hello. If, if you have problems, it's... Steve, we can uh, get it from our side. Uh, Axel can share it. If you yes, want, I'd shared, yeah, I shared and it was moving. Now it has stopped. Okay, please, if you can share. If you don't mind, Axel, thank you very much. Yeah, I know connectivity so, is uh, very often an issue. A challenge. Yes. So I'll be presenting about the eGranary. The eGranary is a is a digital mobile platform, and the whole idea about uh, the eGranary is to aggregate farmers aggregate markets for them, make them, um, make them uh, attract, attractive to the markets and make the markets attractive to them next. So I'll be saying next. Yeah, so this is a comment from one of our eGranary committee members from Uganda. Uh, and like Solina said, it's, it's, it's by farmers, it's for farmers, facilitates farmers access markets creates a financial history, facilitates access to credit by farmers, access to certified inputs, and it's easy to interact with. Next. So this is the outline of my presentation. So I'll talk about AF, uh, how it works, the e-granary works, the value proposition, some of the results, and sustainability. Next. In 10 minutes. Um, so e-granary is part of... Uh, Eastern Africa Farmers Federation. And it responds to our third strategic plan, which is transforming smallholder agriculture into a rewarding investment. Eastern Africa Farmers Federation has over 25 million members in 10 countries. And we are part of uh, PAFO, the Pan-African Farmers Organization, which has 80 million farmers in 48 countries. So the membership countries are in green. Next. So uh, the eGranary responds to our, uh, our strategic objective number two, which is leveraging digital technology. Next. Next. So this is a structure of implementation. So at the top is EF, and EF has formed a, a company. Now, uh, we are working in three countries, Uganda, Rwanda, and Kenya, and we work through our national farm organizations, which then connect us to the respective regions in the country, whether it's at district level or at county level, depending on the, the structure of the country. And uh, at the local level is where the e actually operates from. Next. So what we formed is uh, what you call a holding company for the purposes of running the business. It's called EF Limited. And uh, this is guaranteed, uh, limited by guarantee. So fully owned by the Federation. But for the purposes of business, we have a company called Virtual Granary, which is uh, limited by shares. And then it has what you call subsidiary companies uh, in Uganda and Rwanda. Next. Uh, so that's a legal structure. So that's that's the first thing that you actually need to do. So how, how the eGranary works is that uh, it connects. Th those are three more or less like uh, columns. And the eGranary is in the middle. 
and uh, we have a USSD platform as well as a web uh, app. And like I said, we aggregate farmers through their cooperatives, through their groups, not as individuals, but through their cooperatives. And then we connect them to the left and we provide, uh, of course, contracts with the buyers, um, mechanization, inputs, uh, uh, access to credit, insurance, uh, among many others. And, and, and that is the essence of the platform, you know, access to finance, access to inputs, access to extension, because on the platform, we're able to push out information for extension, and then we're able to connect them also to markets. Next. Next. So in terms of the structure, you can actually see it starts from the right. So once we sign uh, a buyer contract, we have a buyer called ETG. Then the contract is broken down uh, into farmer contracts because we are, we, are, we are working from a master contract, working backwards. And since we have been able to mobilize all the other actors along the value chain, then it's it's we, it's easy to connect to the input provider. So the fertilizer is provided in bulk. We provide the extension service, but the extension service is a shared service because the buyer also provides extension, the insurance provide extension, the finance co company provides extension. Uh, the inputs company provide extension. So all those support, support the system. So from the supply contract, which is more or less like a forward contract, we work with the, with the credit uh, company and they actually finance everything backwards. So in essence, the farmer receives uh, inputs, receives extension and does not pay for anything up until the point uh, of, of sale. And at the point of aggregation, we have actually uh, mapped these aggregation centers. They are in GPS locations. So it becomes very easy for the buyer to actually go and collect uh, this product with ease. And at the point of sale is where now we actually deduct um, whatever costs uh, may, may, may be there. And since we are buying in bulk, all inputs are actually certified. It means they, they, they also get uh, quantity discounts. And our revenues, uh, our revenue model is based on special fertilizer as well as commissions on sales. Next. Uh, so it's a very easy platform and uh, it's based on the fact that um, you know we have internet connectivity now almost everywhere in the continent so the farmer just registers on a ussd model uh, platform and reports how many kilos they are planting so from the back end we're able to tell what that is in terms of hectareage what that relates to in terms of fertilizer requirement what that relates to in terms of seed requirement and we're able then to organize those at the back end with the, with the, with the input providers be able to present that information to the credit uh, service provider, and they're actually able uh, to provide the financing for that because it's based on the contract, because the contract is actually the, the collateral. And then at the point of harvest, then they're able to report harvest. So it's USSD, it's very simple for any farmer. Next. So I want to present some of the data uh, that comes from the dashboard. You can actually see the kind of data we actually have, you have the name, of uh, the farmer, their contacts, the nearest town, their county or district, their identif uh, national identification number, their organization, organization, their year of birth, their gender, and when they register. So it means we can disaggregate this data by age, by gender, by location, by cooperative, uh, and so forth. And every year it changes automatically. So if you are youth this year, and tomorrow you're, you're, it's your birthday, you become 36 years old, and no longer you, so that data actually changes. And next, you'll actually see how it is summarized. Next, please. Next. <laughs> next, please. Next slide. Yeah, I think he's facing uh, a problem. Yeah, so this is the Two data seconds. from a farmer group. You can actually see how they key in. So all the farmers, when they key in, we're able to see the total number, how many are maize, how many are rice, how many put growing even Nerica, beans, green grams. And even when it comes to harvest, what you have, what has happened is that you have to train the farmers because the harvesting is based on what is passed by the country in terms of bag sizes. So if it's a 90 kilogram bag, then they'll say it's one bag, we know it's 90. If it's a 60, 50 kilogram bag, for example, for beans, then you know it's 50 kilogram bags. And when you say they're bag, then you know it's one bag and it's 50 kilograms. So this data is very helpful in terms of what uh, we call a farmer, developing what we call a farmer payslip. Next. Next, please. Next, please. 
Yes, yeah, so this is the aggregated data, like I was saying. So in the dashboard, you're able to see all the farmers. You can see the farmer distribution you can, uh, in terms of age, in terms of gender. And when you want to send extension messages, either you can send the maize farmers or the rice farmers or all farmers or only women or only youth. So we can be able to disaggregate uh, in so many ways. Next. So in terms of, and, and this is most imp very important for uh, a mobile platform, you have to be very clear about your value proposition. So for us, for the finance service providers, they are very clear, they're getting new clients, they improve, they're improving their, their lending margin, uh, and they're introducing new trade finance channels. So an input provider is very clear that they're actually doing bulk selling, so they actually have a client and they're able to make money out of it. For the buyers, they are short of the quality, they are short of the volume, they are short of the quantities. In terms of us as the operators, uh, our revenue model is based, like, like I said earlier, on fertilizers because it's a margin, because of bulk procurement, not on seed, not on extension because that's, that's a public good, not on pesticides because again, the margins are small, but in fertilizer and then in sales because then we are able to negotiate a better price because of the, because of the fact that uh, we are getting the the the, the, the broker uh, off from the, from the line, and then we are, we are, we are looking at subscription in terms of you know elevating uh, the revenue stream. And next, and then for the farmer again, they are assured of the certified seeds, certified fertilizer. They are assured of uh, the markets. They are assured of uh, um, support in terms of extension because they provide good agriculture practices. And like I said, extension is a shared function. So this week is here of coming to, to visit. Tomorrow is a bank because they're also looking at their loan. The other time is a, is a seed company because they want to look at the seed germination. It's insurance because they have provided information that um, you know we can plan at this time. So that helps the farmer feel that you're actually part and parcel of, of the process. Next. And what are the results to date? So far, in terms of the market, we've been able to sell more than almost $3 million worth of maize seed, maize, beans, and soya. Uh, in terms of access to finance, uh, in addition to the loans that the farmers are getting from their cooperatives, we've been able to give issue almost $1.2 million in terms of loans. Next. Uh, in terms of uh, extension, so directly, more than 20,000 farmers trained. Indirectly, we can uh, over 50,000 farmers through uh, digital training. In terms of the data, we didn't have bio data, we didn't have traceable financial data, we didn't have production data. And now on our platform, we have more than 263,000 farmers who are registered in Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda. Next. So this is what we're actually offering in terms of technology. So we have a new SSD uh, application, which the farmers are able to register themselves, report on their own data, and within, because, because they're either cooperatives or associations, we have trained someone who actually assists in that. Then you have a web app, which helps us clean out the data uh, you know, and, check, and check any errors and so forth. For extension, we provide an outbound voice, voice web app. So we're able to record a voice and the farmer listens uh, to that. We have a call center. We have a web dashboard, which helps us manage reports. And we also have a payment gateway, which is uh, integrated to the M-Pesa. Though on with respect to this one, um, most of the loans are disbursed by the banks. What we actually pay through this is maybe payments from the from the seller. Next, and these are partnership setters. You can see we have over twenty five partners with banks, with input providers, with off takers, even with governments. So when you signed MOUs uh, and so forth and so on, there are letters of agreement in the three countries. Next. So in terms of sustainability, this is how we look at sustaining an e-platform. First of all, the farmer has to make money. As long as they're providing a good service and there's yield increment, it means at the farmer level, the farmer is making money. And then and then, and only then can you be able to make money as an e-platform. Number two is looking at the institutional and organizational uh, sustainability. We're using the hub structure, which means that uh, the groups are, are, are linked around a common aggregation platform that helps in terms of logistical management. We ensure that the leadership and management are, are strong and we are monitoring them. Then the corporate structure, I think I presented that in, in earlier slides to show that it has to be set up as a business, that everybody knows that this is actually a company. And then processes and procedures have to always continuously be developed uh, so as to ensure that you're improving efficiency, quality of output, uniformity of, of, of performance, 
And the last and most important is partnership development. It's very important to have the right partners and always ensure there's trust because you can see we are connecting the farmer from the farm to the market. Next. So uh, this is the field. You can actually see how farmers uh, register on the e-granary. We have pamphlets. Uh, we do outdoor uh, registration, outdoor training in halls, and so forth and so on. And next. And, and the final one is a storage. So like I said, these stores are GPS located and there's traceability because every farmer who delivers the, their product to the, to the, to the store, we, we have a traceability uh, code. So you're able to trace back the farmer and know which farmer actually uh, may have had challenges of quality. Uh, and in case that is picked out by the buyer, then that farmer is penalized uh, for that particular product. So otherwise, that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Steve. Very, very uh, impressive. And this uh, responds very well to the concerns of Baba Femi at the beginning that, uh, you know, uh, farmer led, farmer owned, and farmer service um, uh, facility and uh, always growing. I'm very, uh, very happy to see that. So um, you, can, you can share uh, some of the uh, insights uh, in, in, uh, in a short moment, actually, um, on, on the questions, questions part. We will have now the latest um, uh, presentation for today. Then uh, I see already many questions. Uh, and that would be uh, Daniel, Daniel and Rose, uh, qui est, le, en fait, le directeur général uh, Daniel and Rose is the uh, CEO of uh, Manobi Africa, which is a, a pan-African company. He is uh, his passion is uh, scientific expertise, but he's also a businessman. And uh, I have learned that he already knew Koli Asebe. Now it is uh, called Kolid. So you've known us uh, right from the start. Uh, Dr. Anrose has experience in uh, agro, uh, agricultural harried land. Uh, he's a member of the prestigious uh, Senegal uh, National Academy of Sciences and Techniques. He has uh, created Manobi Africa, which is a company specializing in orchestrating agricultural value chains and, and drinking water sector uh, across Africa. He also has uh, provided Ag Accelerant branch, which is dedicated to agriculture. So it's a, a um, he provides a digital, so it's a blending between digital technology with on the ground presence. So these solutions are extremely useful um, and brought to 60,000 producers over 10 African countries. So thank you very much for being with us uh, from Senegal and to share with us your outlook and your experience as Manubi CEO. We know that you're also the link with research and science, which is of paramount importance uh, when you want to create a startup in Africa. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you very much. We are no longer a startup by now, I must say, uh, uh, not because of the size of the market, but because of uh, the uh, age we've been around. No, it was not uh, derogatory, but we've been around now for some time and we've been working on um, transforming agriculture in Africa. And the reason why we're interested by this particular topic is because our continent is still marked by being uh, highly dependent upon uh, imports and the uh, trade balance of our countries depends on this uh, on on uh, imports and it is the banks that fund the imports but we do have the farmers we have the oils and we have the youth uh, so we have the human capital so this is not normal how come we have that 
Well, our agriculture is a small scale agriculture with small holders who are poorly uh, or underfunded. And in an area like ours, especially in West Africa, in West Africa, and uh, in the Sahel or Sub-Saharan Africa, the uh, climate is such that the conditions are very particular. You could have an agricultural season is uh, uh, well-defined in terms of time. So that means that the farmer needs to have all the means possible to uh, so to um, uh, harvest in time and to be able to organize things before and after. Um, and so he needs to look at the calendar and do with and 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 do with it. Uh, so in our continent, we're trying to see what is the origin of the problem and what could be the consequences. I'm going to try to share my screen, if you don't mind. Let me see if I manage to do this. I'm trying to do this. So you were talking about the concept of digital uh, presence and digital agriculture. The concept that we launched in Kenya a few years ago is because we were aware that uh, there were interesting technologies that could be used uh, to um, serve a large number of customers as eGranary just demonstrated. And we also felt that we don't have a history of being able to use the data. Jeremy pointed out that we need to be able to understand how the data will be used by the farmers, uh, maybe help them use the data, and also give us the feedback so that we can have an improved system. So this is the concept of uh, digital agriculture, where we combine the digital uh, uh, technology and the physical presence on the ground. Daniel, just in case you think you're sharing, we do not see your images. I don't think we've received your slides, otherwise we could have helped you. Uh, it, yes, that's it. We have your slides now. Thank you. So I continue with this concept of digital orchestration. So combining physical presence and digital technology. Unfortunately, it looks like my slides are frozen. But forget about the slides, I continue with the explanation. The situation is such that the majority of farmers today do not have access to credit. And this is what eGranary was trying to solve and we tried the same by making sure that the whole value chain be organized in such a way that there is a connection between the producers, the industrial, the processor, those who are going to be able to inject funds in the value chain so that we can pay the production of the grower. Of course, you also have the suppliers of uh, inputs and the, the suppliers of services. So, we need, apparently, we are not moving in the right direction with the slides. That's, so here, this is our mission statement in the agricultural sector. So this is the situation of small scale farmers who are exposed to difficulties in getting access to credit. Can we move on to the next slide, please? So what we've done is that we've created a platform called Accelerant, 
ag accelerant to uh, bridge uh, um, this uh, link between the producers and those and credit. So producers should not only be known as um, individual growers, but also as people who are connected. Um, so they are in a network where everything is connected and co-organized um, with the banks, and you have tools to secure the use of the online credit uh, taking into account the agenda of the producer and that productivity will follow and transactions can be facilitated before and after the production and that these transactions can be as fluid as possible. So we can move on to the next slide. Thank you. And so we have three categories of services. I'm not going to go into the details, but we're using um, satellite technology to map and score. We're going to use in artificial intelligence. And this is all part of the service so that all stakeholders, all the uh, production managers can actually give the information about their crop and make sure that the transactions are secure. So this is part of the value for all the stakeholders. So the buyers, the insurers, the banks, the, the suppliers and so on. So that's all very nice, of course, but, but there are risks which are associated with the funding of the uh, value chain. And we believe that most of the risk come from the weakest link, which is considered to be the farmers. It is not necessarily so. In fact, our experience has shown that one of the major risks in the value chain in uh, production areas like the one we have here in Senegal, where you have a very short rainy season. So the transactions or the period of transactions of all these stakeholders that you see on this slide are going to have an impact and destabilize the agenda, so to speak. So the, 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 the calendar. So the risk is that even if you have the technology, you need to make sure that all of the players will accept to play the game together according to um, a certain score so that the orchestra can play the music, so to speak. Of course, we have the funding. We have all the ingredients for this to succeed. So the funding is there. Those who are willing to fund the import, the banks are willing, but there are internal processes within the banks or within the insurance companies uh, or within the companies of the buyers and suppliers which are not sufficiently taken on board so that the relationship will be properly orchestrated, will be properly organized so that everything can unfold uh, smoothly. So let's take the example of a bank. You need to have a clear agricultural policy as a bank. So you need to have processes within the bank to say, okay, I'm going to uh, fund pineapple, but it's not the same as funding uh, cashew nuts or as um, peanuts. Or if you do peanuts in Senegal during the uh, rainy se season, it's not doing pineapples in Cameroon in the wrong season. So you need to have a policy 
to fund the agriculture, which is fine-tuned. So the banks need to take into consideration the scale. If we need demonstration, we can do that. But if we want to ensure uh, food security, if we want to redress the trade balance, if we want to create value so that youth will stay um, uh, in the rural areas to work the land, then there is a lot more that needs to be done. Research needs to be conducted to um, discuss with each of the players so that African agriculture will be funded the way agriculture in Europe or in the US is being funded because farmers there can benefit from a whole retinue of solutions that are still not accessible to African farmers. And that is what is missing. And we hope that these solutions will uh, help them, um, not so much in terms of volume, but in terms of importance, of weight. So we want the farmers to be considered as suppliers of raw materials. So I wanted to say this, not necessarily to talk about us, but I wanted to open the horizon because with Senegal and other countries of Africa, we see that the technologies that have been developed, and we saw this with Cameroon, uh, these are solutions that we can sell. And our platforms are being used by farmers. And uh, it is easier to work with the platforms that come from abroad rather than those that come from our own countries. So that means that our own uh, players, our own uh, people need to receive accompaniment to be able to have this orchestration of the whole, of all the elements of the value chain. So this was uh, the purpose of my speech. Thank you very much, Danielle. I think we will be sharing more information about Manobi, uh, and we will also refer to other digital solutions with great pleasure so that we Thank can Thank you very much also for reminding us uh, about the many challenges, I mean, you know, the many conditions that need to be in place and the multifaceted approach in a sense that need to be in place for the technology to work. And indeed, mm -hmm. uh, it's not only technology, uh, it's uh, policies, it's fin finance, it's capacity building, it's um, skills. We repeat at each of our sessions that skills uh, development is uh, critical, uh, but of course the digital literacy, uh, the infrastructure, so the, all the conducive environment, all the ecosystem that has to work as well for all the value chain, mm -hmm. uh, because if it doesn't, it, it cannot work for one alone. I mean, or, or it works in a very short time and, and it doesn't last. So yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a series of questions. So what we are going to do, um, uh, Edouard, uh, in a few minutes, uh, is going to share his experience. I put at the beginning as well the link uh, to some of the digital uh, uh, solutions we have mapped uh, from Colid. Um, uh, very shortly, Edouard, then we have a, a question. Some thank you. You have answered them bilaterally because some are about contacts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then we will have... Um, uh, Axel uh, to uh, present to us actually the blog we launch also today, which we will capture all these experiences and more that are from the audience that we uh, we want to bring in and to uh, you know to develop further because this is a session which is limited in time, so it's just the the starting uh, point of our conversation. Uh, uh, please, Edouard, can you do uh, in few minutes uh, if you are here and uh, Mohamed, si tu peux uh, faire en sorte qu'Edouard If not, I go to the questions. The time Edouard joins us, and I take him after. He, he's here. He's here, Edouard. Edouard. Ah oh, yes, I see him. Ah oh, yes, now I see him. Please, 
please go ahead. Thank you very much. I was uh, promoted as, as panelist, and that's why it took a bit of time. Yes, indeed, indeed, indeed. Thank you very it, much, it, Zelina. Um, so that's, that's just a, a quick... Uh, a quick and, and because uh, he's modest, let me just say in a few words, Edouard, uh, Edouard uh, leads at co-lead, leads at co-lead, that's nice, uh, the research and innovation brokerage uh, program department, which indeed is what we are doing here, but uh, I I more on the, on the innovation side. I mean, uh, linking, uh, you know, uh, smallholders, entrepreneurs with the research and university part. This is, in a, sorry, in a few words, we will post more information about uh, the work, but you have experiences on the digital and we have posted some of the solutions you have mapped. Thank you, Edouard. Thank you very much, Isolina. Yes, just to to give a bit of a quick word on, on the, let's say, activity we've been implementing and, and, and the lesson learned to some extent, because it resonates very much with the, the different experience and feedback provided by the different uh, uh, speakers today. Um, within uh, COLID, within Research and Innovation Department, we are not, let's say, service provider or providing a tool or solution as, as you or um, uh, uh, today uh, with the different company that we're presenting. As Jeremy was present was explaining before, our role is basically to support our partner beneficiary to understand this very complex environment, because of course, uh, there are a lot of technology out there. There are a lot of information and it's sometimes difficult to, uh, to try to understand, make sense, identify what is the real and the, the most suitable technology adapted to certain needs. So we try to play the role of brokers, trying to create some linkages between what is existing and, and, and what are the needs of our partner beneficiary. And on top of that, our idea is to be able to do some pilots. And uh, with these pilots, uh, we try to assess um, the technology so we can provide feedback, not only on a certain tools, but how this, this specific technology can be applied in a specific context and how uh, we can use it uh, to uh, tackle certain issue or certain, uh, let's say, need of our partner beneficiaries. We've been implemented so far uh, for, let's say, a pro a project, one on blockchain and traceability, one on digital traceability only, one on artificial intelligence, trying to uh, uh, predict the yield of mango orchard, and, and one which is now starting, which will be also uh, a similar technology that was presented today, which is the soil scanner to provide uh, quick, let's say, information on the uh, uh, quality of soil and etc. cetera. Um, and all of these technology are great. They have great benefits. They also show uh, some of the challenges. But what is the key lesson learned that we have been to... Uh, understand along the way during this, let's say, review studies or during these pilots is that there is, as I said, a lot of information out there and sometimes it's difficult for um, for the, the final user to, uh, to understand very well how the technology can be helping them in the field. So the most important point I think to, to remember is that it must be as simple as possible. And all the tools that you are designing need, needs to be developed from the beginning directly with the final user. You have to take into account the need of your customer. Um, first of all, understand very well what are their needs. Uh, I, I was really, um, I really appreciated today that um, some uh, some uh, presenter showed that they took into account that the needs was, for example, soil data. Another said that uh, we needed to adapt our app so we could fit in the cluster from the pineapple. This is the type of, let's say, day-to-day -day needs that the customer uh, want to have in the app. And this is what makes the tool appealing in the end and useful for them. It's also really important to understand, as the, the last presenter was also explaining, the, let's say, enabling environments. You have to understand what are the different stakeholders that are, uh, let's say, uh, intervening and how they are interlinked. Because sometimes we also keep in mind only the final user and we just miss all the rest of the of, of the supply chain. And we might have a tool that is maybe only too niche or only supporting just one final use, which is not enough for it to be sustainable on the long run. And one important part is also when you develop your tool is to also develop it, um, develop the business model in direct contact with the final user and your customer. Um, 
Of course, at the beginning of a startup, there is always some business angels, some financing from development, from banks and et cetera. But if you want to be sustainable on the long run, then you have at some point to uh, have a direct contact with your customer. And one of the learnings from our last, let's say, pilot uh, project is that there was a big learning curve from the startup to discuss directly with the final user on how much they would be keen to invest on this tool and what is the suitable business model for them. So it's really important to make sure that all these elements are uh, very much integrated from the beginning because we all very good with technology and science. Uh, but in the end, it's uh, important that those tools remain uh, sustainably uh, established and that they, they are, um, let's say, uh, upscale and, and, and uptaken during, uh, the uh, let's say, the, the curve of the development of the company. So that's, let's say, in a nutshell, a quick uh, part of, of what we have uh, learned from the pilot and our research. And of course, uh, we will continue and probably uh, connect with some of you uh, or you can connect also with us. Uh, we are always uh, interested to uh, learn more about which are the technology that are out there and which one we can you know, help or uh, support to recommend to our partner beneficiaries. Thank you, uh, Isolina, and uh, okay. back to you. Thank you very much, Edouard, and thank you for remaining. I mean, uh, Axel uh, uh, um, uh, will put uh, in the chat the email that you always have to reach out uh, for pilots. As you heard, we have a, a certain number of facilities or support uh, within uh, Colid that can help us, and also, you know, to present uh, your uh, successes, like we like like the ones that I've presented today. Uh, we have many, um, as you will, uh, well, the presenters know, uh, but um, uh, perhaps uh, you don't. Most of the uh, enterprises that come to the sessions are not my members or beneficiaries of Colid, and it's not the entry point. The entry point is that it's interesting and interesting uh, path uh, and growth to show successes that is local led, that they are African, and wherever they are, they are welcome. And we had some of the speakers that actually they reach out. Uh, so please continue to do that and send us uh, contacts and uh, uh, proposals, you know, to come and present uh, your uh, business model. So now quickly, the questions that are remaining uh, for the for the speakers. Um, I uh, um, I will read some. Um, uh, Pyrrhus, uh, Pyrrhus, s'il vous plaît, vous avez... Uh, Pyrrhus, you have... Uh received a number of questions because some of the people are on their mobile phone and they don't necessarily see the chat. So I'm going to uh, focus on some issues which are of interest for many people. So Pyrus, many people were asking for uh, your contact. In which countries is Clinic Agri uh, present? Uh, what is the uh, degree of uh, precision of, of your uh, soil analysis tools and then this is also something that is addressed to other country to other speakers how to duplicate how to export this um, uh, pineapple uh, solutions that you have in Cameroon how can we extend this to other sectors or other countries of Africa so Pyrus could you notice uh, these questions uh, you had also uh, uh, some questions about uh, uh, how you uh, partner Ownership is working? Um, is it by subscription? Uh, is it through intermediaries? I mean, they, want, uh, they would like a bit more of a detail on how you, uh, you deal from the production to the latest, let's say, uh, mile, which is the consumer, um, and what kind of, of, of relationship you have developed. Um, and then um, for Ulrich, Alors Ulrich, de nouveau pour vous, c'est quelle est-ce est que cette application peut être bon alors acheter alors exporter dans d'autres pays et dans, dans certains vous demandent si elle peut être achetée par un autre pays ça ça, ça concerne aussi d'autres si vous voulez bien bien l'indiquer et notamment par exemple au Tchad Steve Steve Stephen Mouchiri Steve there is one I know that you have answered it but just a, a, a quick reminder for those that cannot access the chat now first is the e-granary open to any user 
sector or is it of course reserved to the EIF, uh, EIFF members, uh, which are already many, many, because there are many countries and on top of that, you know, uh, you have said that more than uh, 263,000 uh, farmers are in the uh, benefiting from it, but is it open eventually outside the EIFF? And also, the, uh, is the e-granary checking some of the uh, uh, SPS, the sanitary and phytosanitary standards, you know, uh, in promoting intra-regional trade? Uh, and uh, Daniel, Daniel, vous avez une question sur est-ce que les écosystèmes so Daniel, sont organisés par filière de production? Ecosystems, uh, is it a by a production systems or is it more holistic? In other words, is it for all the farmers regardless of uh, the sector? that they are present on. So, Pyrus, would you like to quickly answer the questions addressed to you? And then, obviously, you can add any comment that you think might be relevant regarding what you've heard from other speakers. Thank you very much, says um, Pyrus. Well, thank you very much. I have uh, loved the presentations made by the other speakers. I believe that uh, Africa is moving, moving forward. So now regarding the question about the uh, reliability of uh, our um, app. It's present in uh, Togo, uh, Cameroon, Burkina Faso, uh, Guinea Karachi, uh, Congo Brazzaville, DRC, and uh, Cameroon. Of course, these are the focal points where they have purchased the kit, which is being distributed to uh, farmers on the ground. So, this means that to form a partnership, it's easy because you um, have a digital system. You know, the tool is less than 800 grams, so it's relatively light. You can take it to the field. And we've taken into consideration the needs of the farmer because we know that to conduct a soil analysis, he has to travel hundreds of kilometers to go to uh, the capital. What we wanted was to bring the lab to the field. So we have an SMS platform uh, called Agricom, which is relatively simple. We have eight to 10 countries which are already using uh, and which who have studied the solution. Um, no uh, sensors, it costs less than 50 uh, cents, euro cents uh, per week. Um, it takes a picture and you can use the solution. So this is the best way to um, manage the water that you have available, which is a rare resource. But we are also making forecast and we are suggesting solutions, irrigation solutions to the farmers. And we also want an optimum irrigation plan so that the farmer can reduce uh, the quantity of fertilizer which is used and improve productivity of the crop. Now, we needed to have reliable data for the country to be deployed. Regarding the um, soil analysis kit, um, in the engineers, the agricultural engineers need to spend 800 euros to purchase it, and then they, ca they can use it with the, the, their teams. If you have other questions, I'm available, of course. I think I've tried to answer all of them. Thank you very much. This is going to be part and parcel of the blog. Um, uh, uh, what you said about the kids, uh, the WhatsApp group also, because you've already given this uh, information publicly. Ulrich. Are you there to answer your questions? So can this be bought by another country? Chad would be interested, possibly. Is this possible? I believe this is not a problem, says Ulrich. It's just a matter of discussing what already exists in Chad. What is the production in the country? So we can certainly suggest an adaptation to the app. 
So if you contact me by WhatsApp, we can have some exchanges and discuss this. Okay, if you have nothing else to add regarding what was said uh, throughout the session, of course, you can always ask for the floor again. Abraham, what about you? You had a few um, questions. If Abraham, the time he gets, we can go to Steve. Yes, yeah, thank you. Hi, Solin. Um, I had two questions, access to the e -granary. Yes, as long as the farmers are organized, either as a cooperative, uh, a business unit, as long as they have some history in that uh, commodity, then we can always enlist them. And for us, the service is free. We don't charge the service. And uh, like I said earlier, we bring together uh, most of the actors along the value chain. So uh, if it's issues of the markets, then we sign a contract. If it's insurance, we cover the crop and the commodity. We advise when to plant based on the projection of the rainfall. Uh, of course, the input company, depending on its size, we are able to know the agronomic requirements, soil requirements, so forth and so on. If one of the things we're also encouraging our farmers to do is to enhance soil carbon in the soil. Uh, I think uh, in addition to having any kind of fertilizer program, in our from our experience, soil carbon levels are very low. So for sustainable farming, that is one of the things we're encouraging our members to do. Uh, when it comes to SPS, I think I answered it uh, well. So one of our partners is IITA. Uh, I think the question was around aflatoxin, actually. Yeah? So, so, so one of our partners is IITA, and IITA uh, is supplying aflacif, which helps manage aflatoxin. So, aflacif is part of our inputs package. Yeah. So, 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 when we then plant, you also try and ensure that uh, we are planting in areas where aflatoxin prevalence is low. So that then you're not susceptible to that. Uh, and then during the, the life of the crop, uh, like I said, we get advisory from the insurance because aflatoxin also comes in when there's water stress. So if there's enough rainfall, then you advise on what crop to plant, whether there's an early maturing or a late maturing. So if there's going to be uh, uh, challenges of weather, rainfall, then you plant an early maturing, means then you there's less predisposition to aflatoxin. And then at the point of harvest, uh, well, one of the services we provide is, is, is machinery or mechanization, and one of the service providers uh, provides dryers. So the maize is either dried if it's still rainy, like in Rwanda, there's, there's the seasons that overlap. Uh, and then in other countries, then you've provided the cooperatives with moisture meters, uh, and they're supposed to ensure that the, 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 the maize is dry up to 13.5 degrees. Uh, I mean, moisture level, sorry. And then the buyer that we have, uh, or at least all the buyers now uh, in Kenya and Uganda, is a requirement that you do yes. a rapid afl aflatoxin really? test on, receive, on receiving of material. So what you'll find is that uh, as you're delivering, then they do a rapid test and they're able to tell you whether you have any afl aflatoxin or, or so forth. And also we have our traceability system. So in case there's any issue, you're able to tell it's, it's from A or from a B or from a oh, Thank you. I hope I've answered the question. Thank you very much, Steve. And of course, feel free if you want to add anything. But that's why if we have donors and, and, and we had many registered, uh, some are not here and see afterwards uh, the recording is uh, critical uh, to support, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, applications like those or like the e-granary that then are accessible to smallholders because that, that is really a problem. And that is also a package of different services together. This is also to really uh, stress what uh, Daniel had said before that is not just the technique part. That's very yes. important to understand. Very um, true. If, if the, 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 you've had so many developments from the point when we started up to now, even when you look at credit and the, and the cost of, of lending, it has been decreasing because the, the, the banks, because of the farmer history, they are trusting the farmers more. We're even seeing them diversifying the credit products. We are only lending to grain. Now they're lending to horticulture. They are giving uh, 
loans for school fees. You know, a lot of things have actually changed. The dynamics have, have really changed. And, uh, and, and even our, our engagement with ETG, you know, most of the companies could not give forward contracts with prices. Now they're actually giving with prices. You know, so I think a lot of things have changed. Even with the insurance now, the cost of uh, the premium has been reducing because, again, we are, we are availing data and they're able to see how the crop looks like. And even when there's compensation, we're also using our own data. In fact, uh, during during our extension, you know, we th there's a way we collect data using GPS location. So we're able to tell, you know, if the insurance company doesn't want to compensate and they're providing certain satellite data, in Africa, the system is a bit different. You know, you can be a kilometer apart and the weather is different. So we're able to actually, we've actually used our own data to argue for better compensation uh, for an insurance payout. So I think there's, there's so much that is actually happening just behind the scenes. It's just that there isn't a lot of time and we're going to actually be able to explain this. Thank you very much, Isolina. Yes, yes, excellent. Thank you so much, Steve, and congratulations. And please reach EIFF as long as you are, are an organized farmer, because that, that is, you know, whatever scale, but uh, you, you, you need to, be, uh, to, be, uh, to have a level of organization. Uh, Abraham, please, um, I, I admire you in the car. Uh, I'm a bit nervous for you, but I admire you that the whole session, you have been managing to have connection and contribute. And, Please, Abraham, go ahead. Uh, could you kindly recite? If there yes, is it's just actually uh, for you. Well, apart, you know, the transferability. What do you think that uh, you, you know, your uh, uh, application can be uh, used uh, ex uh, uh, by other other value chain uh, and other countries? And they wanted also specifically uh, to know uh, uh, what is the partnership? How do you work between the uh, uh, the small holders and the final user? I mean, uh, what is the type of relationship you have uh, you have developed? Thank you uh, for the chance again. And anything you want so, to add, of course. Yeah, I uh, just want to thank you for the opportunity again. And uh, uh, I will talk about uh, scalability, how we intend to, or how, we, we, how we've been doing uh, 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 different approaches via scalability. So uh, we normally uh, want to uh, look at uh, associations. Uh, like we know uh, Kenya has the KTDA, Kenya Tea Development Authority. You know, Uganda has a, a, a similar version of KTDA, which is the UTDA. And uh, Rwanda has, uh, uh, Rwanda's approach is a bit different because we have uh, a, a company like Rwanda Mountain Tea having seven factories. So when we enter an association with uh, maybe a group of um, a multiple uh, a number of uh, factories, we uh, uh, pin it uh, directly into that group. And then uh, we can do factory after factory. How we go down to the end user or the farmer is that uh, through the factory, uh, once you stabilize or add value to the product, the farmers are product producing and supplying the factory, you definitely stabilize the factory price or quality. And then um, it also uh, uh, goes down to the end user or the farmer who has a stable uh, income. Uh, if they have been selling uh, uh, as a, uh, at a certain amount of money and has been fluctuating, you're stabilizing that. And that's what we're targeting and looking forward to uh, when it comes to uh, how we are addressing that. Then. Uh, uh, how do we look at uh, maybe going to um, different other uh, uh, agri uh, uh, agriculture uh, uh, products like coffee and cocoa? We uh, benchmark um, our approaches like we've learned from tea. There's uh, a learning process that we've gone through. And then uh, we think that um, uh, coffee equally goes through certain levels like uh, related to tea. And I want to uh, dig, up, dig deep into the research and uh, first understand uh, to maybe a better uh, kind of uh, uh, level, and then we can approach other, other, other crops and other agricultural products. So right now we are focusing on tea, and uh, we've done Rwanda, we, we were in, in Uganda, we were going to Kenya, and um, uh, I think uh, uh, that gives us uh, a sense of uh, how we would approach scalability. Mm, we don't want to drive further uh, and uh, uh, scale at a, an, ex an expo exponential uh, rate. Uh, which we cannot uh, manage. So we want to manage that. Uh, there are quite a number of factories and uh, farmers, so we want to go step by step. Uh, maybe what I can add on to that is that, uh, of course, uh, uh, every idea and uh, every solution grows uh, over time. You don't know it all in the beginning. You keep refining the process until you master the process. We know that uh, uh, the developed world, and I think uh, one of the people pre who presented here talked about uh, the developed world having 
already solutions existing for their farmers that uh, would uh, leapfrog here. But at certain times, you find that uh, we have legacy systems uh, locally on the African continent that you can directly plug in, uh, leveraging uh, what the developed world has. So indeed, we need to craft a number of solutions locally. Uh, the adaptability is a problem because uh, affordability is another problem. Because uh, if you realize that uh, like uh, at an interconnect point, uh, we've been manufacturing, we've had to manufacture se sensor chambers uh, from as far as Switzerland because we couldn't find uh, a suitable manufacturing partner for hardware on the continent. Uh, and uh, we're targeting now to see can China produce it at a more cheaper price. And uh, this puts up a point that uh, there's a lot of uh, investment into infrastructure, uh, especially when it comes to hardware manufacturing that, that, uh, that is required on the continent so that we can match the standard. And eventually we can uh, ex export our solutions to the developed world. Because if you can do, build a solution locally and it is up to global standard, then you can export it uh, globally. But if you can't build it, up, build it locally, uh, then it becomes expensive for you to build it in the developed world and then save the developed world. So we need to uh, work around uh, partners like you guys at uh, Coyal and, uh, and Pafo to see whether there's a lot of investment into uh, uh, the, building these solutions. Uh, how long does it take to build these solutions? Either do we just uh, uh, leapfrog or do we just uh, adapt uh, to whatever environment we have and make it better? Uh, uh, discussions along that line, I think, are very good. Uh, for us, we're trying to combine hardware and software, uh, whether it is uh, 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 latest technologies or uh, uh, leveraging what is already existing. We still need infrastructure Thank on the continent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abraham. Very wise indeed, uh, business uh, uh, thinking as well. And uh, we continue the conversation with a great pleasure. Uh, Danielle, uh, you had a few, uh, yes, also uh, questions. And the last one, also the applications, are they viable to uh, grains like uh, male sorghum, maize, etc.? And um, the, are they, the applications integrated to do uh, advice, marketplace, finance, and the solvability uh, part? Um, if you can quickly address that one and any anyone you want to add as well. Thank you. Uh, definitely, yes. Basically, the, the platform is designed to run over any crop, any production system, and any uh, production basin. Uh, there is a, a, a back office which allows to uh, set up all the parameters to describe a cropping agenda for a specific crop, a specific variety in a specific environment, you know, and for a specific system. And that agenda will uh, 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 determine how the uh, platform and the service of the platform will be offered to the client at the front office. So we have that. But as I say to you uh, previously, our, our, our objective is not to cover each crop unless we know everything about each crop. So when we go on a crop in a specific environment is because we know or we have partners knowing how this crop is, uh, this plant is crop in this specific environment. So the parameter, parameterization of the crop is absolutely important, particularly when we talk about generating data, providing data that are really contextualized the need of the client. So that's one point uh, on which, and yes, second point, yes, it is covering the entire chain from preparation of the cropping season to credit allocation to the different uh, stakeholders, to credit installments during the cropping season. Uh, we have, I just sent, for instance, uh, in the chat, one of our last development in IoT, we have, uh, we have uh, um, a connected rain gauge that could be used by every single farmer very cheap and connected so that we can send advices to the farmers. So we have all these things that we develop to really support the farmers. We have mechanization services. We support mechanization service providers by providing them a platform through which they can really optimize their distribution, their service distribution towards the farmers. The same for the insurance company and the same as well for the bank. Even we just know that for the bank it's a little bit much more complex so that to make the IT system of the bank, our system, IT system communicating with the IT system of the bank, 
So that's something which is a little bit more complex, but we are very well advanced. And also we are injecting a lot of artificial intelligence, generative artificial intelligence in our system. And that's the reason why it is important also to know exactly every, have the knowledge of the crop, the agronomic knowledge of the crop. It's, it's something which is very important. And also the, the specification, the specification that the mark of the product that the market is looking for. That's something which is also very important to in, implement into the platform before to use it on a specific crop in a specific environment and for a specific production system. Thank you so much, Daniel. Indeed, please reach out to uh, uh, Manobi. They have an extensive uh, website uh, as well, and uh, we continue the collaboration with great pleasure. Uh, it has been really, really very nice uh, to uh, listen to all these cases, and there are many, many more that we have to learn from and encourage. So uh, the latest, uh, quickly to finish on time for our interpreters, uh, and I will not summarize the discussions. They are too rich and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Everything almost has been said, but Axel, you have been since the almost number two or three of these uh, uh, innovation sessions. We are today number 15. I've been constantly asking in the chat na -na 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 -na, that you want a platform to continue the exchanges beyond, of course, what is always limited, which is a two hour session. I mean, that, that's what it is. But to share more information, one, to consolidate what we all share. Uh, in those sessions, and then to also have a platform for interaction among among yourselves, which is lively, where you can post, you can interact, what you are always asking uh, in the chat. So we did put some resources which were un unforeseen. So I do hope that you will uh, make the most of what you have asked. Uh, I will monitor that closely. No, please. I mean, uh, uh, and Axel will just show as quickly um, uh, the the platform. And we will, of course, uh, share in the in the coming uh, communication we will have. Um, you know, Axel. I mean, I always mention Axel, Axel, Axel. Uh, Axel is a bit shy. Uh, she's the project manager uh, of uh, of uh, within the department, uh, so she's working. We work together, and she's also organizing all these sessions uh, in the background. You know, that is where the most uh, of work is happening, and uh, has been uh, putting a lot of work uh, um, with Alison in uh, the. Uh, platform you are seeing, uh, you are going to see uh, now. So Axel has a strong uh, legal background uh, to start with, but then a passion and a strong background as well on food systems and agri-food and a passion for the private sector and the entrepreneurs that goes beyond my own, I would say. So please, Axel. Many thanks, Isolina, for those nice words. And thank you all for joining today. So I am quickly going to show you within the two last minutes we have um, the Agri Innovator website that we have developed uh, with the PAFO. So the link is um, in the chat. You can click on it and then you access this very nice page. Um, Agri Innovators is <coughs> available in both English and French. Um, just click on the small flag at the top uh, right side of the screen, and then you either have everything in French or everything in English. Um, on this platform, you will have um, different features. Um, one, uh, on the top menu bar, you will see innovation sessions. And for this session, uh, or in this tab, you will just retrieve all the innovation sessions that we had so far. Uh, up to session number 15 um, by clicking on any sessions, say now the uh, number 13, you will be able to retrieve the program in all the languages available, speakers, biodata, um, a short summary of what the session was about, and then um, the link, which is usually asked for us of all the presentations that were made by the um, panelists, and every time you have the presentation available in English or in French, um, and if you still scroll down, you'll have um, the access, apologies here, you should have the access to the um, uh, recordings that are available on YouTube. You also have the access um, to the recordings on the first sentence um, in the article. Then, uh, as you might know, we are also drafting business profiles about all the companies that have been featured uh, in our session. And we will also start drafting the business profile about the companies uh, who presented their uh, innovations today. 
uh, you can just go on business profile or fiche d'entreprise in French, and then click on any company that you might be interested in and file all the information about this company. Um, we also have a section about impact stories uh, where we deep a bit more um, inside what uh, a company that has been presented during one of the session uh, is doing. Or uh, for instance, Cold Hub, they presented their company over two years ago. Um, then you have a bit of an update of what they've been doing since then. Um, lastly, if you go on the topic section, you have a top down menu with uh, different topics. These are mainly the topics that we access and um, discuss during the session. You can go, for instance, on uh, climate resilience, where uh, you will find first a small uh, article setting the scene. But especially in the end, uh, if you scroll down, you would have um, all the news that are linked uh, to climate resilience, uh, be it impact stories, business profile, or a specific innovation session about this topic. And lastly, um, this web page also um, includes a networking um, feature. If you go on the home page, then on the right side of your screen, you have this networking box. And if you click on join now, this will lead you to the forum platform that we have developed. Uh, and on this forum platform, you will be able to start a discussion, answer to um, questions being asked in another discussion, and engage with other um, people, uh, be it um, people who have attended the innovation sessions, people you know that might be interested in engaging with other uh, entrepreneurs from Africa and beyond. And uh, to access this, you just need to first create an account on this uh, forum, and then you can launch a discussion or answer. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. You have all the information here in the tab contact or here by filling out um, this uh, little box. And uh, we really hope that you're going to enjoy and use this website as I believe it's something that you all, or a lot of you have been requested over the last years. Thank you. Very much, uh, Axel. And I uh, hope again that uh, all of you will uh, uh, use it to share information. We learned today is all about also sharing experiences and you learn from them. Even when you have been successful, not all the pathway has been easy. And I think you learn a lot from the challenges as well. So please keep uh, keep sharing the information. We will put it all uh, there. And um, thank you very much. I don't want to summarize. I We all agree that uh, technologically innovations are key uh, for the for the value chain development for the agri food sector uh, but they are they are just one of the components you, we need much more around uh, and that's what all of you have shown as well you need the very very strong links uh, inclusive links with the small holders, and I insist on that because they are the, really the lowest part in the chain is the, the, the critical one where they are uh, very often forgotten. And you need to enable and support the whole um, value, uh, value chain actors, but you also need to constantly update your skills, uh, your networks, your contacts, your markets and have a close uh, relation with the policy side as well as the research. Don't hesitate to make the link. That's why also we have a brokerage function to make the link with some of the uh, of the research, be at your local level or be at uh, international level. Um, and we will be continuing mapping, of course, uh, the different applications in different value chains with uh, PAFO uh, uh, along, uh, you know, those uh, those uh, sessions. Uh, I thank you. Um, everybody very much unless somebody from the speakers has still uh, um, something to add if not what I would say is that uh, it's always a pleasure uh, with PAFO to organize that I thank you very much of course the team from Colid, but even more the team from PAFO uh, who is uh, very very active I uh, thank very much uh, the colleagues uh, who have been also developing it has taken them a lot of work because it was unforeseen on their 
plate uh, that agri innovators. Uh, so I thank you very much, um, uh, Gaetan from Mao's side and his team, uh, Sandra and Insa from the social media, from PAF1 Colid, of course, Axel and Alison from our side. Uh, it is a lot of work behind, so that's why please use it to, uh, to share your experiences. And uh, I, I, uh, we will just, uh, you will just receive all the presentations as usual, all the recordings, uh, and now it will all be in one place, which is the Agri Innovators uh, platform. And uh, we will uh, send you the invite for the next session uh, very soon. Don't hesitate to make proposals for topics. Don't hesitate to send to send us if you are happy, and that's what we get as a feedback that you are uh, quite very happy with those sessions. Also, don't hesitate to come from the audience, jump and come from the other side and present also uh, your uh, business. So if nobody has any more to say, I would then thank very much on behalf of PAFO and on behalf of Colid. I will thank very, very much all the presenters. They have been excellent. I've learned a lot myself. I thank very much, of course, the interpreters without who we couldn't communicate. And I uh, welcome you uh, to the next session soon. And keep well. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Zonina. Bye-bye, everyone. Daniel. Ah, Baba oui. Femi is back. Yes, yes. I just uh, came. Uh, thank you very much for the... Oui. Sorry, Baba Femi, I you finished your doctor appointment earlier. Please, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. if you have anything to add, I'm sorry. I, I, no, I... no, 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 it's okay. Just to thank everybody that uh, have been part of this uh, uh, session. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, you have taken something. And uh, we have, I, I particularly the launch of the Agri, Agri Innovators uh, Forum. And uh, I think uh, I'm looking forward for to, to a real... Uh, uh, on-site conference in Kigali, maybe next year, uh, where we bring all these uh, all these uh, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, together uh, uh, at, on a physical site to really to really talk about the uh, innovation in the agricultural sector in Africa. So I wish you all the best. Thank you again. Bye bye.